Howdy guys, so today we're going to cover something a bit different, as you can see I'm in my car, and that's to cover something that I've been using for a while, just kind of continuing the trend of stuff that I like, and this is something that I've been using to basically give my car Android Auto, even though it didn't come out of the factory with that. Now, you could have just installed a custom head unit or a third-party head unit that has it installed, but uh, me being a bit of a DIY kind of person, I figured I'd do something myself. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so down here you're gonna see that it's booting up a custom animation there. That's something I put together specifically for my make a car. And I think it really looks just kind of help tie everything together to make it look a lot more OEM, which is something that you're usually going for. I mean, it depends the kind of person that you are. But one thing that doesn't really look all that OEM is this casing. So I'll show some B-roll of this, I'll try to. This is a custom mount that I designed and 3D printed because this is basically just a Raspberry Pi, a touchscreen, kind of mounted over the factory uh, head unit. And that's because I was having some issues with some third-party ones and uh, there's some wiring issue that I couldn't quite figure out. So I just ended up saying, uh, screw it, <laughs> I'll just do it myself and do something DIY, which is, uh, this is pretty fun. It satisfies that kind of DIY edge that I have. But anyway, uh, let's get on to an overview. So the main thing I use this for is for Android Auto, obviously, but you can do a couple other things or it gives you some other features. So as long as you have a compatible Bluetooth adapter, you can use this to make and receive phone calls uh, as well as play music over Bluetooth. And let's see, I'll try to demo that real quick. If, if you saw earlier, it did say that it was connected to my phone. So let me give that a shot. And apologies if you, if you can hear all the rain, it's just been raining <laughs> quite a bit lately. All right, so that's loading up. Hopefully you can hear that. I'm not going to play too much of it for, you know, copyright reasons, but you can hear it sometimes if you go to A2DP. Sometimes it'll load the info for it, sometimes it won't. It's not that huge a deal to me, but it would be nice if it was more consistent. Uh, this is something that I expect them to be able to iron out uh, here in the next few releases. Oh, and if I haven't mentioned, this is Open Auto Pro version 5.0 with that launched uh, not too long ago. So this is the latest as far as I know. But let's back out of that. Now, applications, that sounds kind of cool, but these, as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm concerned, aren't really all that useful. Um, they essentially just take you to a browser with the exception of Kodi. I think that is an actual application or program that's installed. But YouTube and Chrome, they just open up browsers and take you to those sites or, you know, allow you to do stuff. I've tried it in the past. It's just not really worth my time. It's just really slow. Don't bother with it. Unless maybe it works better on the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using a 3B Plus right now. Okay, let's skip that. We already kind of touched on A2DP rear camera. I don't have that set up, but I know that some people do. Um, so you'd probably look, want to look at the forums, which there are, is a pretty good forum for this. So I'll link that down below in case you want to learn really anything about this, but I'll try to cover the basics. Now mirroring, mirroring works if you enable Android uh, debugging settings, but you also have to, and I'll touch on this quickly. So now, it's going to lead me on a tangent, but I went to the settings menu down here and you're going to have a ton of settings that you can change around. Realistically, I would leave most of this stuff default just to be compatible with most phones. You don't really want to mess around with some of the stuff with Android Auto because that means you're going to have to make sure that each Android Auto or each phone that you're connecting into Android Auto needs to be configured exactly like that. So leave most of the stuff default. What we're going to change over here is in system, I believe start Android automatically and then turn that off for a second so I can show you mirroring so here I'll click on oh, I should probably get on this real quick and let me just make sure I have that enabled I didn't uh, but I'll go ahead and, and enable that plug in the cable and we should see here in a sec it'll tell you to uh, allow this connection so hopefully that comes into focus just click allow and soon you should see on the screen. Well, it's showing something, but let me cancel out of that. Let me try pushing it again after that. So maybe the first connection is not going to be 
the smoothest but right now you can see that it's just mirroring what i have on my screen this would be really useful if touch was also if i could touch this touch screen and have it kind of control this but it's i guess a limitation of what they can do and that's not working as far as i'm aware this isn't a thing that you can really do um, but you could still you know try to open a different application maybe that isn't really supported under android auto um, and play something like that but it's not really all that useful for me so i just tend to disable it so i'll go ahead and disconnect and we'll go back into settings and oh, not there but to go into the other menu let's go back in here system and re-enable start android auto automatically and what that's going to do exactly what it sounds like when you plug in your phone it's immediately going to start android auto without prompting you to you know enable it yourself all right and that kind of covers that android auto pretty self-explanatory if you want a more in-depth video on that let me know but if you know what it is hasn't really changed all that much since the last big update one of the things that is new on this one is the equalizer this is uh, i think new in the 5.0 version it's really nice because of this kind of weird interesting way i have this mounted over my factory head unit that i can kind of tune the sound without having to physically remove this in order for me to actually get to the oem head unit so this has been really nice let's go back here and i'll quickly touch on some of the settings um, most of them again very very self-explanatory but uh, in terms of the stuff that you might want to customize appearance here uh, the stuff that i do i set it to 12 hours because i'm in the states and uh, other stuff you can do is the contrast and opacity of some of the controls i tend to leave it at these settings more or less but that's just personal preference you can go into the options for some other stuff uh, if you wanted to show this top bar which can be handy sometimes if you click on this little arrow down here it'll give you the options to control the brightness of the screen if your screen supports that which the official one does and you can also control the volume which i'm having a small bug with that on this release but you heard it earlier sound works just fine it's just the slider doesn't work right now now i'm gonna go back out of here mirroring it lets you adjust the resolution uh, again i don't really mess with that day and night now this is something that i had a bit of trouble with uh setting up it because what i wanted it to do is based on the time it would just go into android auto day mode or night mode now the raspberry pi doesn't have a built-in real-time clock so i had to install one and configure it uh, that was a bit trickier than i expected <laughs> but i finally got it working so i'm not really going to mess with it too much in there but if you have any questions on that you can just kind of look up uh, how to enable or set up an rtc in raspbian and you'll find tons of guides and I, I used a couple different and it depends on what rtc you get but anyway right now i have it set to come on day mode at 7 a.m and start night mode at 5 p.m okay back into the settings uh the last thing that might be you know something that you actually want to change is the wallpaper so as if you might have been able to see and you could probably see if i made it more opaque or made the controls uh, more transparent is i have a custom uh, background and that's just to kind of give it again a uh, more cleaner less out of uh less out of place look uh where is this control capacity so as you can see i have a chrysler background on mine which like, of course makes sense because this is a chrysler vehicle okay and i'll, I'll leave it like this for now but if you have any other questions about this please let me know it's been working a treat for me i've been using it for the better part of a year now i used to use a different one called crankshaft i have some issues with that but the main thing with this one is that it is not open source it is not free there is a license cost so make sure to be prepared for that uh, i forget exactly what the cost is it's not over 30 bucks it's like 20 something dollars but for me i would much rather pay that money and have continued to support because with this i haven't had really any issues in terms of compatibility or something just kind of crapping out out of no, uh, out of nowhere that used to work which happened a lot back when i was using crankshaft maybe that was just user error but this has just been working really well all right guys that'll do it for now hopefully you like this kind of weird uh setting for a video if you have any other questions please leave them down below all right guys see you later